All right. So one last topic left here. Um, we have seen understanding how to run test from test runner command line, create first Cypress test. We understood principles of describe it. Exploring project structure is the one which we have to see now. So by default, when you hit Cypress open command, test runner will open and automatically it creates the folders for us. So fixtures, this folder is basically responsible to store the test data. So if your test case have some data, we know that you should not hard code the data in your test case. It should be driven from external files like Excel, XML or JSON. So Cypress is suggesting us to put all the test data information in fixtures so that you can load directly into your test without having additional uh, headache of driving or uh, writing a code to drive. Now let me give you an example. Let's say you have your data in Excel and if you want to use the data, you have to write at least 10 lines of code to connect to your Excel to get the dependencies so that your test can talk to Excel. You need to go to workbook, worksheet, scan the column, scan the row and then pull it out. Isn't it? It's a heavy code, but if you place in fixtures all your test data, your test cases are enough intelligent to capture all the data stored in the fixtures with one simple command called fixture. This command will load all the data stored in the that specific directory. Okay. Now I'm not going to talk anything about this. We will learn about how to data drive everything in our coming lectures. Don't worry. So I'm just telling you why this folder is created by Cypress and where are we going to use this in the future. All right, I hope you are clear. Next, integration. This is the folder we use to write all our test cases under examples. Or you can just create under integration and remove this examples folder, it's up to you. But they were suggesting us to write all our tests under this integration folder. This folder is specifically dedicated in building tests. Okay, next plugins. We may not use this folder much, but in general, uh, plugins are kind of listeners. So if you want to set your browser on full screen mode, or if you want to inject some customized options to browser to, um, what we can say to accept some certificates or something like that before invoking browser we will actually give that information here that on browser invoke do this uh, steps okay you can see that on is used to hook into various event cypress emits so on test failure so what happens on test failure automatically you can write some code so that when test is failed that event will be triggered here so these are like kind of listeners, but there is an another way to handle this listeners in very easy manner. So I would suggest using that than using this plugins. But anyways, plugins are used to handle Cypress events, which are nothing but listeners. And you can write your customized code on what to do before that event is happening or after that event is happened. So that control will come into your index file and it will execute that block of code. Okay, and next is support folder. In this folder, you can actually write your customized commands or reusable methods. Let's say there is one method which is used across multiple test cases. So we will generally write one utility and place that method there so that all test cases will can reuse that method in their tests, right? Similarly, all those reusable methods we will define in the support folder so that they are automatically available to your test cases. Okay. So you might be wondered why special support folder? I can create any folder and declare that reusable method and I can import that into my class. Yeah, you can do that. No one is stopping you, but Cypress is throwing you some rules to follow. It's up to you to follow or not. So they want all reusable methods to go into the support folder 
so that they are directly available in your test cases your test case will scan this support folder by default even if you don't provide import option but if you create a new folder you need to clearly tell to your test case that go and import bring that for, or create an object of that class so that you can access the methods of that class but if you declare that in support folder do nothing just call that method directly into your test and your test have ability and intelligence to look into this support folder and execute that method okay so that's the reason we follow the standards and videos this is cool future if your test fails then you will have a video of that specific test not even failure for every test run i think you will have a video and that should store here now for even this test there should be video i guess but any house anyway i can show that how to see that video from test runner um yeah here it is but i still did not explain that Cy how to take a video from cypress and all you can just watch your test execution what happened that's the cool future what cypress provides us i will come to that part soon and you know about node modules right this will be created when you do npm install cypress and this is a heart for this project if you don't have this node modules and you cannot work on any cypress thing and cypress.json and this is also one of the important file in general you will have some configurations um settings in your test runner select the configuration and these are the default configurations what cypress provide us like command timeout so maximum it will wait for 4 seconds for any command to visible if it's not visible by 4 seconds it will throw an error and if you are executing any .exe files maximum execution time is 6 seconds and you can also set where is your fixers folder by default cypress is assuming that you have a folder called cypress/fixtures and this is what it's treating as a fixtures folder if you think you have another folder you can actually override all these configurations by writing it here okay now for example let's say default command timeout is 4 seconds um i want to make it 6 seconds okay let me need to put in double quotes i guess yeah so when cypress started running it will keep all the configurations which comes by default in the mind but if you declare any configurations again in your cypress.json so that means your cypress overrides your existing default behavior with the behavior whatever you give in this json file now you said 6 seconds right so it will override 4 and it will make it 6 okay and if you want to change where fixtures file is located and give that and give your updated path so that it overrides and plugins file where the screenshots are getting stored right now when the test is failed you will have screenshots in this folder if you want to change it and write the configuration that specific configuration here so that your cypress overrides it at run time and take this as a priority so that's how you use cypress.json file okay so these are all self explanatory all the configurations okay timeout execution timeout um ignore test files if you come across these kind of files and where exactly your folder is situated and modify obstructive code i never used it to be frank i don't know what it is and page load timeout if you if you go to new page it will maximum wait for 6 seconds for a page to load if you think that your application have more than 10 seconds waiting pages and that's it so come here and override that behavior to 10 seconds so that your new your upcoming test will override that behavior and make it you see that when i save it it automatically saved it here earlier it was 6 i guess and it was 4 right i saved it here and it reflected automatically in your configuration file with the updated values so 
see how cypress is listening to your um, visual studio code from the test runner okay so that's about configuration settings if you want to change anything just go to your json file and update it accordingly and you know about package.json and this is where we have used and i forgot to tell you that when i do npm install hyphen hyphen save dev i told you that that will create a copy in the package.json right and this is the one and now once this project is done give it to another person he need not do npm install cypress again as cypress information is already present here you can just say npm install that's it and this will actually scan your package.json and understand that there is a cypress folder here and it will get it for you from online okay so that's how package.json is used and we may use it for another purpose as well it's world in itself but for our testing perspective we mainly use it for creating dependencies or creating any scripts which i'll talk later all right guys that's pretty much about exploring the structure let me go back to my excel and see if you have missed any core concept of understanding here yes update configurations in cypress.json which overrides existing behavior as i said i will not define any commands here commands all will be stored in our files right you can actually open our test cases and go through it core concepts i will be writing here which overrides existing behavior perfect so that's about onboarding session for cypress <laughs> i hope you have successfully onboarded with all setup understanding basic structure and everything let's begin with our first test by writing few more commands and understanding few more concepts and we will slowly build our um, cypress knowledge okay see you in the next lecture thank you